Good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. This is BRN AM for Thursday, April 11th, 2024. And our top story today, the Blue Envelope Program aims to connect police officers with drivers with autism. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Mara Sullivan is with the ARC of Massachusetts. Mara, it is so great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you for having me. And and I really want to connect with you on this story and and, uh, and your organization. And we'll talk about ARC in a few minutes. But let's, you know, when I've been pulled over, uh, and I don't, you know, I don't speed that much, but I've, you know, occasionally a little heavy footed um, and pulled over. It's a little nerve wracking um, when the police officer comes up and and because they don't know who you are, they they come up from behind you. They have protocols and procedures that they need to follow. I can only imagine what this may be like for someone that has autism. Can you share a little bit of insight into what that may feel like or look like to someone who has autism? Sure. I mean, I think, like you said, for all of us, it can be sort of terrifying because you you feel like you've done something wrong, right? And that's um, that can be a trigger for people with autism. You know, they really. I mean, I'm generalizing a bit here, but uh, autistic drivers do a good job really following the rules. Um, and I think uh, when you combine that with um, a, a little bit of additional anxiety and challenges around social interaction, as well as communication, um, that's where you're kind of setting up for, uh, you know, a really challenging interaction and maybe even somewhat traumatic um, for the individual. And, and they tell you um, when you do get pulled over. You keep your hands at where they can see you. Don't make any sudden moves because that will cause the officer to completely not trust you and, and go into a different set of protocols. Does that feel the same way for someone who has autism and who's a driver? Because, you know, I think about it, they pass a driving exam that's both written and, uh, you know, driving the vehicle. So they, they're, they're qualified to drive. But Absolutely. as you said, that anxiety kind of, kind of creep in. You don't You don't know what to do. Yeah, absolutely. They are very qualified. But at the same time, um, sometimes there is challenges around what you've probably heard called stimming or stereotypy, where it's very hard to control the body movements um, that may come with additional anxiety. So keeping hands on the wheel might be a really difficult thing. Um, even some sounds might come out of them. Uh, there may be sort of an op all of a sudden um, mute and unable to speak around anxiety issues. So um, there's all sorts of things that can happen. And I think having um, a way for the police to be a little more educated around it um, uh, is really the, the best way to, to approach this now. Yeah, and there unfortunately have been some unfortunate events um, all over the country. You hear about them, of course, they bubble up in the popular press and popular news. Um, our, our police, you know, they're asked to do a lot of things. Um, they protect us, you know, they get the, the uh, proverbial cat out of the tree, or maybe that's the fire department, but they help too. Uh, they, they deliver babies when necessary. <laughs> I mean, they do so many different things. Um, are they properly skilled to handle the, you know, someone who has autism and maybe as you say, stimming or maybe not responding? Yeah. yeah, it's a great question. I, I think there are probably many police officers and, and uh, law enforcement officers who, who have had some experience, either personal experiences within their own families, or, you know, they've been out on the road and, and actually uh, learned on the job um, about people with autism. But you know, by and large, they need more training, more education during, um, you know, their recruit time. And when they're out, you know, really just um, experiencing this and they need to meet more people. The exposure can really make a difference. Um, they need to have more community events and, you know, more structured training. It should be part of their in-service at all times. The thing that's kind of um, changed is the numbers, right? So maybe they wouldn't have interacted with too many people on the road with autism in the past, but we have, you know, prevalence numbers of one in 36 now. And of course, not all of those people are drivers, 
but we are seeing a, a, a big boom in the population of uh, young adults um, moving into adulthood and um, being drivers now. Just here in Massachusetts we, alone, we've doubled the number of students graduating with autism in the last 10 years. Wow. I mean, that is, and, and that that is around the country, as you said, there is a con continuous growth in the number of uh, diagnoses. Uh, last question before we go to a commercial break. Tell us a little about the arc of Massachusetts. What What is it that you do? And that'll help dovetail us into what we're going to talk about in the second segment. Sure, the ARC here in Massachusetts, we're the leading advocacy organization, the state ARC um, for people with autism and intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families. And uh, we really advocate um, to make life safer, to, to enhance lives, and to do that through community inclusion. So when you think about the driving aspect of that, I mean, it's just so important that we're able to um, make driving accessible as well as safe, not just for the individual in their family, um, but for the, the law enforcement as well. Yeah, really important work being done. Maura, I need to take a very quick break. When, when we come back, we'll talk about the Blue Envelope Program in Massachusetts. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRM AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Welcome back. We're joined this morning by Mara Sullivan of the ARC of Massachusetts. Mara, thanks so much for staying with us this morning. Absolutely. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, this is a, a, a great conversation and, and you know, kind of set up the, the program. I mean, I know when I started driving, my parents were very worried. 16 years old and in, in charge of a moving vehicle, uh, 2,000 pounds, however big it is. That's a, that's a lot. Couple that with a, a diagnosis of autism. Uh, I, I bet you there are some concerned parents out there just in general. Let's talk about Blue Envelope. Uh, what's the Blue Envelope program, Maura? Oh, it's a phenomenal program that's just game changing for autistic drivers. And you mentioned parents as well. I've heard from so many parents that are just so relieved to think that this could be a tool um, to help their loved one um, who's out on the road. And yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's just a tool to help not only the individual, but the officer. Um, it's blue. It's a simple envelope where you can put your license and registration in and keep it in your visor um, or in your glove box. But basically on the outside of the envelope, um, you can. it's a communication tool. It'll tell the law enforcement officer, um, you know, any issues that you might want them to know that you may not really be able or have a chance to communicate. 
Like maybe um, you might need to put your hands over your ears because the si sounds of the sirens or the traffic or something um, might bother you. Uh, you may have trouble communicating in general. You may need to make a phone call to a, a caregiver to help you out. All of those things could be on the envelope to help um, communicate that for you. And just the envelope itself serves as a, a sign a symbol to the police um, that yes, this is a person with autism. I'm going to have to approach this situation differently. I'm and, and hoping that it's coupled with more training as well so that they're really feeling confident as they approach a vehicle and, and get a blue envelope. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I, so how do you, how do you get the blue envelope? It's, I would imagine it's not something you just pick up at a Staples or another card store uh you probably have to get like the official blue i would imagine yeah you're right i wonder if there'll be some like knockoffs <laughs> people will try to use probably right now. because that's just the way the world works exactly um well right now uh the legislation here in massachusetts is being worked on so we're hoping it will become law and then it will be a standard blue envelope across all RMVs and you can pick them up at the police stations as well in your local police stations. But right now um, in other states that have used it, um, it works the same way. You, As soon as you get your license, you're able to apply for this if you want it. I mean, the nice part about this is it's totally voluntary. You might be an autistic driver who absolutely never needs a blue envelope with you. Um, but just to be able to have that choice is huge. Um, so a lot of uh, police stations and, and districts throughout Massachusetts are kind of developing their own blue envelope, uh, trying to use a similar model to the mock-up that um, is being used now in Connecticut. Um, but they're so excited about it, they don't want to wait for the law to pass, and they just want to get this in the hands of drivers. So you mentioned this is a, a law in or a bill that's been passed in other states. How do... How how do how do we get this to move faster in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? I, I know it's in the hands of, I guess, the, the House of Representatives. I'm not familiar with your bicameral. Right. Is it a legislature or a Senate? But um, how, how do we get it to, to move forward? Yes, um, a lot of advocacy. That's where the art comes in. We're really engaging with families. And I'll tell you, there are families who, you know, don't have uh, children or adults with autism, but still want to jump in here because they really see the value of it. I have two kids with autism. Um, they're not going to be drivers but I am very committed to making sure that other folks with autism have this opportunity. So the Senate had passed the bill um, unanimously and now it's sitting in front of our House of Representatives. So we just have to keep pushing them, keep telling our stories about why this is so important and, and how it really can be a game changer. I mean, it passed unanimously in the Senate. I know it's a different body, but why, what, 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 why wouldn't you want to do something and you know like like this i, I guess i'm not sure i understand is it yeah. just about timing and in, in terms of taking the bill up it's about timing it's about prioritization um issues of of persons with disabilities take a long time to get to the top sometimes yeah. you know they're they're fighting these big battles and uh with the state budget right now but we have a lot of confidence that um we have a ton of champions on the house side and we'll we'll move this bill through yeah, well, it's certainly something that has worked elsewhere and people yes. want it. I mean, you, you hear from families all the time. They want it. Usually when there's a big uproar and a big cry from for people, it usually gets done. Mara, we're going to have to leave it there. Great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. And we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Thank you so much. Thanks for bringing awareness to this super important issue. That wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest. Someone you think we should talk to. Then drop us a line and don't forget for all the latest curated news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more in all in one place. Check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content? Well, then visit our website. Hey, we're back again tomorrow with another edition of BRN AM. We'll have a very special guest and, of course, another important topic. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe. Keep on saving. And don't forget, roll with the changes.
Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.